Good morning. I'm going to go off subject a little bit. Uh, this month, I'm going way off subject. <laughs> because of the fires. I live in North Fork, and I was on my way up to, do a, a, to be part of a graduation ceremony that Angie was doing, and the fire people came through and said we were on pre evac So I'm there going, what do I do? You know, what do I feel? Is it going to come? I don't know. So I went back home. And it was really close because a, a tree had combusted like a mile ahead of the fire. So all the equipment and everything is down at the fire, and this is now burning out of control close to North Fork coming that way. So they got in extra tankers, and they got in dozers, and you know, you can listen to it on the scanner so you know what, what's going on. And it was amazing what they did. But one of the things that I was really thinking about is, you know, you got to pack the car. How much room do you have, and what are you going to take? And it gets down to really, you know, basic things. Okay, do I throw the clothes in the trash bags, or do I save suitcases and pack everything? I, do, I take my computer, sure, and I take my cell phone, and then the tax stuff, and the bills. <coughs> but then you get down to what's really important are the knickknacks. Nah, things that are memories, well, maybe not. You know, it, it really narrows stuff down. So do you allow the memories to burn? Do you allow the wedding photos to burn? I burned those a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was a ceremony in itself. Yes. That's when you could burn in the backyard, you know, and you have a 50-gallon tank and drums out there and could burn it. Boy, that one went way into the night with a lot of rain. <laughs> oh. But what do you keep? What's really important? And I realized that what was important to me in that moment were things about survival. What do I need, you know, clothes for the week? What do I need, you know, the bills that have to be paid right now? What do I need for whatever work is doing this week? What projects am I working on with that? And it wasn't about saving a lot of other things besides that. It got down to real basics. And you know how my mind wanders on this philosophical stuff. So my question then became, our mind and the thoughts in our mind. One of the things they said about the fires is they thought they wouldn't have been as bad if they'd had more controlled birds. <laughs> you know, burning up the dead wood, burning up all that dry grass because we are in a drought. And you can just go by the lake and you see all the dead trees from the bark beetle because there's no water. And it really gives you a different look on life and how you do things and when you wash your clothes and now all this stuff is do you wash the car? I mean, how much poop do you let, bird poop do you let get and dust get on the car before you wash it? Because do you feel bad if you wash the car? I mean, it's this whole thing. But we're concerned with healing ourselves, making a difference in the world through what we do, through what we think, through how we act. And I thought, what if we looked at our mind, when you got the monkey mind, the busy mind that's always going with the thoughts, as the forest before it burned? So it's full of weeds, it's full of dead wood, it's full of overgrowth, it's full of all of this stuff that hasn't been cleaned out or kept up. It's like a garden full of weeds. We have the thoughts that drive us crazy, we have the thoughts that come out of nowhere, we have the memories and the thoughts that come out of just there all of a sudden, you know, you're thinking about an old relationship or something that happened or when you were embarrassed or all these different things that aren't a part of who and what we are now. They're a part of our past, but yet we're still dragging them along with us. So I was thinking, what if we did more controlled burns for our mind? If really looked at what happens, I mean, that's a perfect symbol of what happens when you don't take care of something. And how often we, we work on our minds and we work on the thoughts when we're in the middle of crisis. But how often do we do it on a regular basis? When we're going around and things are really good, we like deflect from those things and don't really work at it on a continuous basis. And looking at what are some of the little things we could do because how many times have you dreamed about something and you couldn't figure out the meaning of the dream and it was something from way back when? Or you find old pictures that you've kept of stuff that's no longer a part of your life and doesn't really mean anything, but you've been lugging this box around forever? Or you have old letters or old school papers. I had report cards for forever. 
I have no idea why I was lugging those around. <laughs> and when my parents passed, my dad's report cards and school books were still in the garage. <laughs> you know, it was just one more piece of paper or stuff to lug around that didn't have anything to do with our life today. So I want you to start thinking about what's going on in your mind or in your life and is it really relevant to today? Is it something that you need to keep being aware of, keep thinking about, keep worrying about? How many times do you go back to conversations years ago and second guess what you said and wonder if that's why you're not talking to that person now? <laughs> All these things, and that can drive you nuts for weeks, you know? What did I say? Oh, my family <clears throat> blew up this week. We're having a reunion on the 4th of July. Uh -oh. And, oh, God, it started already. <laughs> One even saying we should cancel. <laughs> so all of these things and the issues were issues that all go back to childhood that haven't been here. <coughs> these people are all in late 50s and 60s. One almost 70. You know, by now you think we would have gotten a handle on some of that stuff. They're still dragging all those memories, all those thoughts, all that garbage poisoning their lives. I would suggest that we do some control burns <laughs> in, in easy ways. I found a couple that work. If it's a picture in my mind, I think of the computer. The computer has this question that says, do you want to archive this? And to me, it, archive is this big no-no land, never land out there that I'll never see this thing again. It's just a dump place for me. So when a picture comes up in my mind, I'll sit there and go archive, 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 and you know it's like the old slides? It kind of pulls it like a slide off and it's gone. But I'm telling myself and giving instruction to my mind, my conscious mind, that I don't want to see this anymore. I don't need it anymore. It can go somewhere else. There are all kinds of little things that we can do that we can multitask. I mean, you can do that in the shower. You can do that in the car. You can do it in the instant it comes up. There are so many little things to do to help. You're in the middle of a crisis or all of these things going on, and Jenny and I talked a lot about this this last week, things to do. Turning your affairs over to source, to God, whatever the word is that you use. Just surrendering it because if it's in a mess and you're in a mess, you don't have control over anything. It's happening to you. You're reacting to it. You're not thinking in the best way possible. You, you could have the depression going on, or be sick, or be nauseated, or just be triggered all the time with emotions and have anger and all of this going on. In the middle of that, we've got to figure out a way to help ourselves. So turning it over, just saying, and being thankful for it. I'm so grateful in this moment when I'm miserable and the world sucks that source is handling all of this for me. And letting it go, stopping the worry, because we do believe in this wondrous power with universal laws that work. And they work whether we're aware of them or not. It's going to work because source has an intention for us. That intention is for us to be loved and have everything happen for our highest good. And while we may have a lesson to learn from the muck, I don't think Source wants us to be there forever. We could get the lesson and move on. So by turning it over, we can get the lesson and we quit fighting it. And we quit fighting what's going on. Or the one that Jenny does that's so good about in this moment. And she lists the cup half full instead of the cup half empty. So in this moment, right now, just think of it for yourself. In this moment, we're here with friends, we're listening to good music, we're listening to the things that are going on, we're sharing with friends. In this moment, we all had some kind of transportation to get here. And I hope we all have transportation home. <laughs> Think about it. In this moment, you have a home. In this moment is your, is your electricity on. In this moment, your place isn't burning. In this moment, do you have air conditioning? In this moment, is there food in your cupboards and food in your refrigerator? That's a lot to be thankful for. I know a lot of us over the years didn't have those things. Ones that were homeless, ones that didn't have any food, ones that didn't have heat, hadn't asked friends for help or do without. In this moment, 
We have a lot. And sometimes I think we have so much in this country that we forget to appreciate it. We feel that it should be more or be better instead of being blessed by what we've been gifted with. To find a way in the moment when you're in the muck or when you're in fear from fire or whatever's going on, whatever the stressor is, to find the moment to be grateful for what we do have. I had a number of people call me, text me, email me that they had a home for me to come if something happened, a place to go. That's way high up on my list. Those people would have fed me, taken me wherever I needed, probably loaned me money. They would have given me a shelter. Who could ask for more than that? That is a gift to be appreciated, a gift of people, the kindness. We see that every time there's a catastrophe up here. People rally around, they help, they give of their time and their fundraising and their dollars and clothes and whatever it needs to be. Last year they gave so much they had extra clothes, they didn't know what to do with all of it. They had to quit taking donations. That's the kind of people that are in our lives. So when you're down there, remember something good you've done for somebody. Remember how good that felt when you gave? Know that it feels good for people to help you too. <clears throat> to reach out and let them know when you need something. To reach out and say, I don't have this or I don't have that. People don't judge that. They run to help. To let the heart open and to let the love come in. It's hard when we're stressed to do those kind of things. If you don't do anything else, and you're laying on the floor in a fetal position, find one thing to be happy for, one thing to be grateful for. You're alive, you're breathing. Maybe that's the only thing in that moment. But by that show of gratitude, you're showing the universe, you're showing source that you appreciate what you have, that there's value in you. All of these things are important. The thoughts that we no longer need, See somebody, try something, do things. You can go to YouTube and find just about anything that you need. You can find EFT, you can find prayers, you can find like-minded people. You can find it on Facebook. You have friends here, you have ministers here, we have practitioners here. We have people that will sit and listen and help. Sometimes you just need to be heard. We do that a lot. We'll pull somebody across, go outside, blah, 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 I'm done. You just want to get it out to be heard and not be invisible. You have to reach out to not be invisible. You have to reach out for people to know you have a need. <clears throat> I'm busy in my life, but if you tell me that you need something, I don't have a problem with stopping and taking care of that. If I can help, I'll be there. But damn, you got to tell me first that you need it. It's no great here in a month down the road everything that went wrong, I can't help you then. And if I could, what good's it going to be? You needed it when it was happening. Reach out to your friends, they're important. Reach out to the family that you get along with, they're important. <laughs> but to have someone in your life that you can talk to. <clears throat> and if you don't have someone, ask around in here, because there's a lot of good talkers and listeners in here. But we don't have to do it alone. Work on those thoughts that put us in those places. Do the little things and help. Always gratitude, always. Always a connection to source, always. No matter how you pray or how you're connected or how it's done, make that connection that works for you. Then you're never alone. You know someone's always got your back and that is so important. And today we have the healing service and the healing circle. If anything is stressing you out, if anything's going on, please get in the circle. When we pray and when we come together and we have an intention, it makes it bigger and bigger and bigger. And we all deserve to be happy and healthy and have a good life. Mm -hmm. Thank you.